There you have it. Another safe haven is gold. Uh, that is at a seven-year high, up 27 bucks at 16.76. Oil, that's not a safe haven. You're coming out of oil because of the decline worldwide in travel. $51 a barrel for oil, down two bucks. And look who's here. I need help from those who have experience in handling this kind of thing. And Maria <laughs> Bartiromo has seen almost as many sell-offs as I have, but not quite. <laughs> sell-offs, rallies, yeah. the whole nine yards. How do you handle this one? Well, look, I think that you want to first stop, see where you're invested, assess what your investments are, and actually identify where the exposure is in terms of the exposure to China. Don't think every company is Apple. It's not. Apple is an outlier. Apple is producing everything in China, and then it's counting on all the demand coming out of China for its growth story. That's not every company. Yes, 50% of the earnings in, in the S&P 500 are coming from international economies, but not to the extent that chi that uh, Apple has uh, entrenched in, in China. So not everything is going to get impacted here. Aren't there going to be a lot of people, small investors, individual investors, who look at this market and say, you know, it doesn't cost me anything to buy a stock. The transaction cost is zero. So if I buy Microsoft, say, at seven, uh, $170 a share, and 10 minutes later, I sell it for 172. There's going to be a lot of people tempted to do that. Yeah, sure. You're going to want to flip and get in and out of uh, stocks. But that's, in my view, that's not the way to uh, create wealth over the long term. I think you don't want to look at every sell off as an opportunity to go knee jerking reaction all over the place. Look, I think you have to assess your portfolio and understand uh, you, fully. You're the voice of calm. Yes, it reason. is. Because I'm not worried about this because I saw this coming. Frankly, of course, we were going to have disruptions from China. You saw an 800 point sell off. I did. Coming? I saw the disruption coming and I talked about it on the air and the reason is is because you're going to have disruptions of parts shortages and components everything is made in China look at the medical services industry where you've got everything from plastic gloves to the mask to 70 percent of drugs generics are coming from China and India right. yes you're going to have disruption so let's understand fully what the disruption is let's understand fully what companies we own and how much exposure they have do it calmly you don't have to sell everything out today do we have a v-shaped recovery because at some point the virus will be dealt with. I don't know when. Yes, exactly. I don't I know how bad it's going to be. But when it is dealt with, do we have a V-shaped kick on back? I don't, I don't know if it's V-shaped because I think it all depends on the duration of this, Stu. You know, I mean, if this goes on another two-week incubation period and then another two week after that, then it's going to be longer than people thought. And it also depends on, are we going to get the honesty from China? They have not been honest with us. They knew about the coronavirus back in 2019. They didn't tell anybody. And we still don't really know where it originated from because they won't allow the CDC in there. Having said that, I think that it's important to just stay calm, assess your portfolio, and look at opportunities to, to get in. This may very well continue for a little bit, but there will be opportunities to buy great companies at great prices. Got it. Maria, hold still for one second. <laughs> you got it. Uh, you know, control your enthusiasm, as they might say. Uh, we got news on the virus, and this is from the World Health Organization. They just held a press conference over in the past hour, and I think that's kind of why the stock market trickled past the 800 to 900 point down once again. The uh, WHO, despite the fact that we've seen a seventh death in Italy being reported in the last hour or so, they say that it is not a pandemic still. They are still reluctant and says it's too early to declare a pandemic, but we're still trying to avoid that reality, according to the WHO, when it comes to the coronavirus. Right now, what they're witnessing is the uncontained global spread of this virus, and uh, we are not witnessing large-scale okay. deaths. Hence, it's not a pandemic still in their view. But a 12th death reported in Iran, at least 12, seven in South Korea with over 800 cases, seventh death in Italy with 219 cases and 50,000 being quarantined there. Globally, 79,000 individual cases and close to 3,000 deaths. What you got? Huh? Well, yeah, I was just, you know, I just wanted to bring home deaths. Maria's point about everything's made in China. I'm looking at this fine Vani and Company <laughs> coffee mug. I turn it over and guess what? It's made in China. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, even here well, on Varney and Company. It's the workshop of the world, and when it slows it down, we're all going to feel impact. the heat That's on exactly that. exactly right. But, yes. but Maria, I mean, Xi Jinping is doing, he's moving mountains to try to get this thing behind him. He's going to pump a ton of money into the economy. Yeah. He's going to order people get back to work. 
going to work. And he already did that, right? I mean, he over did. the weekend, he told some people, go back to the factories, even as the death toll is rising. I think it's very hard to believe anything coming out of China. And by the way, Susan just went through all of the deaths and the sicknesses. Those are the deaths that we know of in the hospitals. China is reporting the deaths coming from the hospitals. We don't know any uh, about any deaths in, in apartment homes or in just homes in China. Those are not being reported. So I think that this is probably worse than it looks, certainly for China, because they have been playing this down from the get-go. We really need the Centers for Disease Control to get into China and start doing an investigation. Unfortunately, the Chinese will not allow that. Uh, but look, I, I, unfortunately, this well, is what we have to deal with. We don't have the real answers from China, but hopefully we'll see innovators in America and the companies that can produce what we need to produce for treatments and ultimately a vaccine, even if it's a year away, uh, America will be Heaven first. forbid there's a serious outbreak in the United States. We've got 35 cases so far, a very, very restricted, limited number. Heaven forbid that really expands. It's true, and that's the reason that the president limited uh, air travel. Yep. And isn't it interesting that the Chinese are criticizing us from stopping flights in and out of China when, in fact, they've got people locked up in their homes? Right, exactly. Very, very good. And we should be criticized for stopping travel. Uh, let's talk politics. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, Bring Brett it on. Bottrovani, right. The latest Gallup poll shows President Trump's approval rating is holding steady, 49%. And we have independents. They've got 43% approval of the president. That, apparently, that's a high for the group. Doesn't sound very high to no. me, but OK, I'll take 43%. Well. I think the president's got momentum. And I think he write it all the way through to November. But that's my opinion. What's yours? I think he writes, too. I, look, I think when you start comparing President Trump and his policies to what we've got on that stage the other night for the debate, it's it's a clear choice. And socialism is not going to fly uh, in the face of these pro so. these programs that the president has instituted that have actually really moved the needle on jobs and opportunities for most people. Look at the black vote. This weekend on Sunday Morning Futures, I had Candace Owens. She says yeah. the, the minority communities are increasingly supporting the president, not because of of what he says because of what he's done. Uh, precisely. Yeah. Um, you remember, of course, Lloyd Blankfein, former Goldman CEO. He says he's no fan of Bernie Sanders. There's a long quote here. I'll read just some of it. I think I might find it harder to vote for Bernie than for Trump. Let's leave it at that. <laughs> I might find it harder to vote for Bernie than for Trump. That's interesting. He's a Democrat. I had, uh, They're totally dinner, I had dinner with uh, Lloyd Blankfein with a couple of other people uh, right before uh, the election in 2016, and I said to him, Lloyd, how many people at Goldman do you think are supporting Trump? And he said, what? Mm. Very little, no, not at all. <laughs> Meanwhile, I had had dinner with a couple of portfolio managers at Goldman, and they said, we love Trump. He underestimates the support for Trump within Goldman Sachs and throughout Wall Street. They understand what the Trump administration policies have done for their businesses and their lives. But they're totally split. Democrats are totally split. They can't totally see it, Stu. They just can't see it. And they don't want him to affect their grip on power. I mean, let's remember, he came in, starts pointing, at you, you're doing this, you're in the swamp, we're going to drain the swamp, trying to expose everybody who wasn't doing what they said they were doing. They don't want to lose their power. His very presence is threatening their existence. I think you're right. Maria, thanks for staying up late to be with us today. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> yes,